Hello, this is Larry Tentarelli with Blue Chip Daily Trend Report. I put together a brief educational blog and video, and what I'm going to cover today is position sizing and risk management. Maybe one of the, the most asked questions that I get, and often one of the, the biggest concepts that sometimes traders struggle with, is position sizing and risk management. So I put together a blog. I'm going to go through the video and it's it's going to be very educational. I'm going to go into some detail. We've got a graph, we've got some charts. So we'll get started uh, with the video. So a couple of things quickly where I'm going to treat this almost like a, a textbook approach. I, I put together a grid that will go through We've got a chart of triple Q that we'll walk through just with some basics as far as uh, position sizing goes. So we'll start briefly with the disclaimer. Basically, it says that everything in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not financial advice. It's not individual investment advice. It's really educational. So we'll get started with the, the blog, and I'm really going to walk through this a step at a time. Uh, when I started to learn this going back almost 20 years, it took me a very long time to grasp the math. But then once you do, you can do this math in a few seconds. So I'm going to walk through this. Uh, it's very educational. It, you may want to take notes or stop the video at any time along the way, but we'll get started. Position sizing and risk management. So... For the purpose of this post, I'm going to use a, we'll use a hypothetical $100,000 account value, just because it's simple to do the math. So step one, risk management, obviously it's very important. Always focus on risk management and position management every day at all times, especially when considering new positions. So really the first concept that we're going to talk about is total open risk. And what most professional traders or professional investors do when they build their portfolio or when they're building positions is they first determine how much total risk do they want to carry at any one time. So instead of just buying random stocks here and there and having them add up, what, what professionals do is they start first and determine how much am I willing to risk overall, and then I can build positions from there. So what that means with total risk, if all positions got stopped out or closed out, what is the total loss versus the portfolio equity in percentage terms? So a key note here, we're we're going to define risk not by the total dollar amount in the position, but only by the amount that can be lost if the position is closed at a loss. So here's what I mean, and, and I'll walk through the, the, the math and you can follow along. So if a trader puts $10,000 into a position with a 5% stop loss, then the risk here is not the $10,000, but it's the 5% potential loss on the $10,000 invested or $500. So if we use a hypothetical $100,000 account, $500 of risk would be half of a percent or 50 basis points. So in this case, if we say how much risk do we have in this position? It's not $10,000, but it's the $500 that, that represents the stop loss or, or what would be lost in the position. Standard total open risk levels for many professionals often falls into the 5 to 10% range at any one time. So hypothetically, they have a $100,000 account they take a series of positions and they decide I'm going to risk 5%. If all positions are stopped out, their $100,000 is going to lose $5,000. It's down to 95. And I'm going to go into a lot more detail 
as we get into this grid. Uh, for many professionals, market volatility often determines how much risk they'll hold. So in, in low volatility markets, general bull market uptrends, when we don't have, let's say, Fed tightening and, and regional banking issues, things like that, traders and investors might have a lot more open risk than they do in markets like we have right now that are, and this is um, May 2023. But in, in this type of a market environment where the Fed is still raising interest rates, we've got news events every day, we've got regional banking issues, we've got a lot of volatility. In that type of market environment, professionals will often have a lot less open risk. Uh, and obviously everyone is different, but five to 10% is a general rule of thumb. So what we're going to do for, for this video is we're going to assume that our target open risk is 5%. But the first thing that, that we need to do when we sit down to put the account together is figure out, obviously, account value. How much am I willing to risk? If I came in tomorrow and every single one of my positions got stopped out or closed out, how much would it cost me? That's the way that we need to determine our target open risk. So for, for this video, we're going to use 5% as an example. So in this case, we have a hypothetical $100,000 account. We're willing to have 5% of open risk at any one time. And then once we hit that 5% open risk, there's no more new positions unless, unless some risk is reduced somewhere. So new risk needs to be added to the current open risk. We'll talk about that some more. But here's really the key uh, the, the key function. Position risk. The, the biggest misconception that I see when I talk to, or that I hear when I talk to people, is they only equate the stop loss as their risk. But in reality, it's the position size, how much money do you have in the position times the stop loss, which determines your risk? And we're, we're going to spend a lot of time on this right now, because when I get done with this, you should be able to do this. When, when you get done with this course, you should be able to do this math almost in your head. So position risk. To determine position risk, we want to multiply the percentage weight of the position times the stop loss level. So here's what I mean. If, if I take a 10% position in an account and I have a 10% stop, that means I've got 1% of risk in that position. If I So $10,000 position, 10% stop. If I get stopped out, it's going to cost $1,000 or 1% of account value. If I take a 10% position with a 5% stop, Half of a percent risk, $10,000 position, 5% stop, half of a percent risk. So that's the, that's the basic math. How to determine my position risk is how much money is in the position percentage wise. What's the percentage to the stop that determines the risk? And we'll talk about this some more. So fixed allocation sizing versus fixed risk sizing. Here's what this means. Some traders or investors will choose to stay with a, a fixed allocation size. So a trader might say, every position that I take is going to be a 5% position. I'm going to put 5% of my money into any stock or any ETF that I buy. Or they might say it's 10%, whatever the number is, but they, they might just always have a fixed amount. If I buy a stock, it's going to be 5% of my account value. Others will look at it differently. And instead of uh, using a, a fixed allocation, they'll use fixed risk sizing. So in this example, trader A might say, I'm going to risk, I'm going to put 5% of my money into any stock when I buy it, no matter what. 
trader B might look at it differently and not look at how much money they're going to put into the position, but how much they're willing to risk in the position, meaning if they lose, how much are they going to lose? So trader B might say, I am a, a 50 basis points of risk trader. And what that means is regardless of whether they put 2% of their money into a stock, 5%, 20%, whatever the number is, 50%, whatever the number is, they're only willing to lose X percentage if the trade doesn't work. So fixed allocation sizing, trader A says, anytime I buy a stock, I'm going to put 5% of my money into that stock or 10%, whatever the number is. Trader B says, it doesn't matter how much money I put into the stock, I'm only willing to lose X percentage if I get stopped out. And we're going to talk about this in some detail to help you with this. So step number one, we want to determine our total portfolio target open risk. In this example, we're using 5% total risk. Then we have to determine our, our target risk per position. In this example, just to keep the math simple, we're going to use 50 basis points. Then we have to determine the stop. So here's where the math comes in. There's, there's position sizing calculators that you can use online, and that's great. But I, but I like to understand the math uh, in every direction, up, down, and sideways. Because when, when you understand the math, as you go through your position management, you'll be able to just look at a chart, figure out where your stop is, and that's a separate video, and then everything will make sense. But what we're going to do, you can, you can look at this grid. It might seem a little bit complicated, but I'm going to walk you through it. So the, the left-hand column is how much risk are we willing to lose in a position if we get stopped out? So I've got 25 basis points of risk, 50 basis points, 100 basis points, that's 1%, 200 basis points, that's, that's 2%. So every trader is different. I know traders that are willing to risk 1, 2, 3% of their equity in a position, they can get a pretty big position size, but if they have a hypothetical $100,000 account, they take that one trade and it gets stopped out, they lose $3,000. That, that's a lot of risk in general. But if they only have one or two trades on at a time, then it still can balance itself out. So what we're going to do for this example, we're just going to focus on 50 basis points of risk, half of a percent. So in this example, we're going to determine that, that trader A is a 50 basis points of risk trader. So what that means is if they get stopped out, it's going to cost them 50 basis points. If they have a $100,000 account, they buy XYZ stock, it gets stopped out, it costs them $500. So in this case, if trader A is a 50 basis point trader and they they size up a chart they get a buy signal let's say we'll, we'll use triple q very simple so we'll take a look at the triple q chart for a minute so trader a gets a buy signal in triple q and let's say they run tight stop losses this chart is from two days ago today it's wednesday I've been working on, we've been putting this video together for the past few days. So that's why the chart is two days old. But in either case, so trader A gets a buy signal in triple Q and they run tight stop losses or, or they size up the chart and they determine that they want to carry a 5% stop. So they're going to buy the stock here, the ETF here, and they want to run a tight 5% stop. So in that case, Trader A, if they're going to run a 5% stop and they are willing to risk half of a percent if they get stopped out, 
then their position size would be 10% of account value or $10,000 in this hypothetical $100,000 account. So the way the math works, we've got a 5% stop. I'm going to put in, or we'll call it Trader A. Trader A is going to put in $10,000 into Triple Q. If they get stopped out, it's a 5% stop. They will lose $500 of money, or it's half of a percent. So just to, to do this math a little bit further, let's say Trader A is a little bit more of, of a trend follower and runs a 10% stop. So whether they just run fixed 10% stops or whether they size up the chart and they see a 10% stop level, however they get to 10%, as I said, determining stops is a totally different video, which I'll do at some point. But let's say trader B says, I want to use 10% stops. So in this case, if they are a 50 basis points of risk trader and they have a 10% stop, then they can only put 5% of their account value or $5,000 into triple Q. So trader A puts in 10,000 but has a very tight stop level of 5%. If they get stopped out, they lose $500. Trader B uses looser stops, but still only wants to risk the same amount. They can only put $5,000 into the position. So if you see the, if we determine first how much we want to risk per trade, then we determine the stop loss that determines the position size. So now we could we could do it the other way. Trader B could say, I am a 10% a trader. So that means anytime I take a position, I put 10% of my money in that position. If that's the case, then they have to look at, at what, what do they want to risk? Half of a percent. So this tells them, if you are a 10% trader, in your position, and you're only willing to lose half of a percent per trade, then you can only run a 5% stop loss. Now, if the trader might look at the chart and say, well, 5% is too tight, I really want to run a 7% stop loss. Then if we go to the grid, 7% stop loss, um, they're willing to lose $500 in that position, now the position size has to be smaller, 7.1% or 7,100. So we can do the math any way that we want to, but the, the key thing to focus on first is, and that's why I've got risk over here, how much, and this is what professionals do when they go into a position, is the first thing they ask themselves is, how much am I willing to lose if I'm wrong? That's always question number one. So just to, to make math even more simple, if, if someone's not following along so far, we'll just say a 1% trader. So we've got trader A, they're a 1% trader. So what that means is trader A takes a position, they're willing to risk 1% of their account if they're wrong, if they get stopped out. So hypothetical $100,000 account, they're willing to lose 1% in the trade if they get stopped out. So in this case now, they can go bigger. So this, this will result in more volatility uh, in the account because the position size is going to be bigger. So trader A says, I'm willing to lose 1% of my value. They look at the chart, and they say, I'm a 5% trader. I'm, they're going to run a tight stop. So if they're willing to, to lose 1% and they want to run a tight 5% stop, hypothetically, they could put 20% of their account into that one position or $20,000. So 20%, 5% stop. They get stopped out 1%. Same thing, same math. They might be a 10% stop loss trader. Then in that case, 
they're willing to lose 1%. They want to have a 10% stop. So the math says their position size would be 10% or $10,000. Where, where traders run into, into problems is they don't do this math beforehand. So they see a stock, looks like it's going to break out, and they, they say, I'm going to put 10%, 15%, whatever it is. But then they don't, they don't do all the steps of the process, which is number one, okay, so we're going to buy XYZ stock. We're going to put 10% of the account into it, but where's the stop? Maybe they run a 10% stop. Maybe they run no stops whatsoever. And then, and then that leads to a lot of volatility. So the math is very simple. What, what most professionals do is they determine risk first. So that would be this column. How much are we willing to lose if the trade gets stopped out? Then we want to find out where's the stop. And that tells us the position size. So just quickly, brief review. If a trader is a 25 basis points of risk trader, that means a 5% position in a $10,000 account would be $5,000 of stock. If they have a 5% stop loss and it hits their stop, $5,000 position, 5% stop, it costs them $250. 250 in a $100,000 account is one quarter of 1% where they lost 25 basis points. So in this scenario, if an investor was stopped out of four trades in a row, they would only lose 1% of their starting value. So the, 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 the pros and the cons is a 25 basis points of risk position is fairly small. They could have a lot more positions but one trade probably isn't going to make or break anything at 25 basis points of risk. 50 basis points of risk would be similar math. If they have a 10% stop loss and a 5% position, that would be a 50 basis points loss. So if they had a, the equivalence would be a 5% position with a 10% stop a 10% position with a 5% stop, 20% position with a 2.5% stop. Any combination that equals half of a percent of risk. Now, if, if this trader has four trades stopped out in a row, now they've lost 2%. If we go down to bigger sizing, 100 basis points, 10% stop loss, and a 10% position is 1% of risk. So, if a trader's a 1% trader, they could take a 5% position with a 20% stop. They could take a 20% position with a 5% stop. They could take a 10% position with a 10% stop. Anything, it could be a 50% a position with a 2% stop. Just as long as at the end of the day, if the position gets closed out, it costs 100 basis points or 1%. So if, if trader A in this example has a target risk of 5%, that would equate to five open positions, each with 1% of risk, 10 with half of a percent, 20 with 25 basis points, or any combination. So the key thing is they're right, what, what's right or wrong, and this is a recap again, but what's right or wrong for each trader or investor is based on their, their mindset, their time frame, how well they can handle volatility, how well they can handle fluctuations in their account. So there is no, there is no magic formula. Not everyone has to be a 1% risk trader or a, or a half of a percent risk trader. Not everyone runs a 5% stop. Not everyone runs a 10% stop. So a lot is based on a, a trader's mindset how well they can deal with volatility and how they manage their positions. But at the end of the day, the, the most important thing is to understand this position sizing because we just can't go through every day and, and look at the triple Q chart and say that looks good and, and uh, Apple looks good and this drug stock looks good and this home construction stock looks good. And then they just start to buy these positions because everything looks good 
and then there's some volatility in the market, they turn on their account one day and their account value is down five or 10%, and then they sell everything. It just, it leads to a lot of volatility. So when, when designing an account and structuring risk, it's just like a blueprint for a house. Start with the foundation and build up from there. So they don't put the roof on the house and then build down. They pour the foundation and then build up. Risk management, position management, position structure is the foundation. Determine how much you're willing to risk overall. Determine how much you're willing to risk in positions. And, and here's what happens. Once the limit is hit, there's no more positions. If, if I'm a 1% trader and I've got five open positions, so now my 5% of risk is full and I want to buy another stock tomorrow, I either need to sell one of my stocks, raise a stop, reduce the position, do whatever I need to do. But once I hit my 5% target, there's no new positions until I make some adjustments in the other positions. I might decide to uh, take a position tomorrow and because my risk is fully used up, I might raise a stop in one or two stocks. I might sell off one or two stocks. I might reduce one or two stocks. But at the end of the equation, when I hit my risk limit, there's no more new ads until something happens in the account to keep the risk in line. So uh, I hope that this made sense. I, I did want to go into detail and, and the fact that we've got a video, we can stop it at any time, watch it again. But I, I wanted to go into a lot of detail to explain this. So I hope that I was able to, to go into detail, but not make it too complicated. Uh, you can find me. My website is bluechipdaily.com. If you go onto the website, you can see what our members' benefits are. You can see some of our recent technical work. I'm an intermediate to longer term position trader. My general time frame is generally three to six months, but a lot of that is based on market volatility. Also, we have a free trial. You can get more details, but I appreciate everyone's time. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you online soon. Thank you.